Look at her, Richard. Look at how magnificent she is. The most deadly hunter ever created. The most deadly dinosaur ever created. And I did it because I'm a mad scientist. You're mad. You are mad. How can you play God by creating a dinosaur? How, however, did you do this? Well, I just let her listen to this Pod Bros exclusive. What's up, everybody? I'm Richard. And I'm Sean. And we're speaking the language of bromance. Sean, we've learned that war is hell. Ooh, a couple times. Yeah, definitely. Emus. Emus are bitches. Emus are bitches. We learned about emus in Australia, and they're terrible creatures. But I'm going to move on to another animal, an animal that started a war. You ready? So this is the, the animal that launched a thousand ships? Yeah. So, I mean, it has to be a beautiful animal, right? Because who was it? Who was it that launched the thousand ships? What was her name? I don't know. Was she an animal? No, it was the, the Battle of Troy or whatever. When the Greeks Oh, Helen. Tro- yeah, Helen. Helen of Troy. <laughs> I didn't know. That's, that, that was a the thing. They're like, oh, we launched a thousand ships. You seriously? Are you, yeah. are you pulling lines from the fucking movie? No, I always, I've always heard that, that she was so beautiful when she was kidnapped. She was so beautiful that she was the lady that launched a thousand ships for, uh, for like, that Battle of Troy or whatever. And then Brad Pitt showed up. Yeah, he, he, you know, he could launch a thousand ships, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, lady ships. Yeah, well, I was saying because there's a lot of wood on ships, I'm sure. Oh, like, I was yeah. thinking because they're on the water and water's wet. Uh, I don't get it. No, and you never will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there, there's an animal that that started some kind of war, and it wasn't like it wasn't like an emu, or it started the war, or you know, from eating grain or something. No, this like isn't that, like the, yeah, the, no, this isn't a thing where like the animal, like we were fighting an animal. Like th- this isn't this isn't man versus beast. Okay, this is this is man versus man. Ooh, but the 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 catalyst of the war. Was an was beast. Okay. All right, Sean. We're gonna talk about the pig war. Ooh, the pig war. That's a, that's not a very good name. I'm not gonna. No, lie. it's not. That's a bad uh, name. You can call it the hog war, the war of the hog, or the hog warts. Ah, huh? get it, get it, hog warts. Okay, I'm pressing stop. <laughs> <laughs> starting over. <laughs> We're starting over. I told you, Sean. Quit embarrass me in front of people. It's all fine until you start making Harry Potter puns. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Forgeticus, Rich. Forgeticus. All right. So this is the Pig War. The Pig War of 1859. All right. So yeah. this is this is between us. This is us. This is the U.S. Good old U.S. of A. 1859. It's us and the British. Em- it's us and the British Empire. That's like three years before the Civil War. Yeah, Civil War started in 1861. So we've had our independence for a while, and there was almost a battle between the British just like two years before this. Yeah, here comes Britain once again. All right. Yeah, we had the Revolutionary War. War of 1812. We had the War of 1812. They burned the White House. They. Burn the White House, Sean. That is rude. War of 1812. They ate a dinner. They had a dinner. There was a dinner party. Did you ever hear the story? Uh-uh. About the... Okay. So, uh, first lady at the time, uh, I want to say it was Dolly Madison, uh, had a dinner... Washington, D.C. is about to be invaded by the British. Dolly Madison... I, like, I, I could be wrong about this, but I, I thought it was Dolly Madison. Dolly Madison has a dinner party... Uh, is going to have a dinner party that evening. So there's a gigantic spread laid out. Because, you know, it's a White House dinner. So you're thinking, like, you know, high society, like, awesome food. You know, the the place settings with three different forks and two different spoons. And one fork, like, has two prongs and it's only, like, six inches big. And you're like, who's going to use that fork? But you use it anyway because otherwise you look like an idiot. But then you realize you look like an idiot because you have a fork that's six inches long. And then you use a spoon anyway because you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. That kind of party. So 
British show up. Obviously, the White House needs to be evacuated. So all these all these people leave and they leave the dinner party to escape, you know, being captured or killed by British soldiers. So the British soldiers show up to the White House and they find this dinner just all laid out on the table. Everybody's gone. Nobody's around. So what do the British soldiers do? Well, they sit down and they have a meal. Oh, okay. That's a big fuck you. Yeah, it is. Because they sit down, they eat the meal, and they're, you know, having a grand old time. And as soon as the meal's over, they all stand up and they push in their chairs and they go outside and they burn the White House to the ground. Oh, wow. So, 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 so I hope, I hope there's some like private out there getting ready to make the joke. It's like, you know how I like my White House? Well done. And pushes over a candle. <laughs> <laughs> all drunk and full. Yeah, good joke, Mister Liverpool. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Like on the menu, it was probably like all you know. They were probably had. I. I, I don't know. I don't know what would they. What would they have at that dinner party? I'm thinking it's gotta be like some like fuck you to the British, like scones, <laughs> French fries. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. The Pig War. The Pig War of 1859. Okay, so we've had and we had the conflict that went from 1812 to 1815. You know, it, it settled down. It's been a few years of peace, it sounds like. So 1859, something happens with a pig. Something happens with a pig. That's exactly Is this like the TV series? Was it Black Wires or Black Tapes or the one where Prime Minister is forced to have sex with a pig? Is this, no, is this what happened? That's Black Mirror, but that is an awesome show. Have you ever seen it? No, you I told watched, me about it, I watched that episode, and that was amazing. And that was really, honestly, th- that was, it reminded me a lot of the uh, the old school, like your old school Twilight Zone episodes. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, so good. I just imagine that's how this war broke out, as some British general was drunk. He's like, I'm going to go fuck this pig you watch. <laughs> oh, fuck it. Don't look away. <laughs> Make the pig face me. <laughs> It walks in, Gregory, I think somebody's out there having sex with our pig. It's just, it, it's one of those British soldiers. Just just leave him <laughs> be, Ma. Okay, so I'm pulling this off of Wikipedia. So we're going to talk first about the Oregon Treaty. This is the Oregon Treaty in 1846. It resolves the Oregon boundary dispute dividing Oregon County, or uh, Oregon Country Columbia District between the United States and and Britain along the 49th parallel to the middle of the channel, which separates the continent from Vancouver Island. Oh, because Great Britain had most of Canada, so this was kind of splitting the uh, Canadian border and uh, the U.S., the the state territories. Okay. However, there are actually two straits that could be called the middle of the channel, the Harrow Strait along the west side and Rosario Strait along the east side. In 1846, there was still some uncertainty about the geography of the region. The most commonly available maps were those of George Vancouver, published in 1798. Oh, you see, this is, oh, this is delving. Like, I don't care who made maps. Don't talk to me about who made maps. (laughs) Okay. In 1856, the U.S. and Britain set up a boundary commission to resolve the number of issues regarding the international boundary including the water boundary from the Strait of Georgia to the Strait of Juan de Fuca. The British appointed James Charles Prevost, First Commissioner George Henry Richards. A bunch of people I don't care about. Oh, see, this is why I hate reading shit, shit off Wikipedia. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, we're skipping ahead. We're skipping ahead. We're going, <laughs> we're, we're going, we're going to talk about the pig now. <laughs> and, and the funny thing is the pig isn't even named in this story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's under a heading called The Pig. <laughs> okay, on June 15th, 1859, exactly 13 years after the adoption of the Oregon Treaty, the ambiguity led to direct conflict. Lee Man Cutler, an American farmer who had moved onto the island, claiming rights to live there under the Donation Land Claim Act, found a large black pig rooting in his garden. So, Farmer... I, I don't know, what was his name? Farmer Cutler. Farmer Cutler goes outside, and there's a pig eating his food. Eating the shit right out of his garden. Well, I mean, so... There aren't wild pigs at this point, right? 
So it had to be a domesticated pig, or were there wild pigs at this point? No, I don't think there was wild pigs. There's still wild pigs. You can find wild pigs. Yeah, but they were wild because of us bringing them, or not us, not me and you personally, but people bringing pigs. <laughs> people... I like how you had to make that distinction. No, we did not bring pigs to America <laughs> from Europe. It's not my fault. <laughs> In the 1600s. <laughs> it, it's when they brought the pigs over and they, they got loose and then they became wild. Because I think pigs, if they are out of like human captivity, become feral after like two offsprings like two like two generations they become feral yeah that sounds right we brought pigs over we also brought horses so little fun fact <laughs> you, know, you know what else we brought richard diseases yeah <laughs> that's what we did that's a, so we brought horses and <laughs> pigs and syphilis you're welcome three things that the indians loved us for yeah Okay, he found the pig had been eating his tubers, which apparently, I guess, is some sort of vegetable. This was not the first occurrence. Cutler was so upset that he took aim and shot the pig. Oh, shit. Killing it. So, uh, a U.S., I I guess the third territory, U.S. citizen shot this pig. Shot this pig. He shot, shot the pig dead. This would be the equivalent of, like, a dog coming in your yard and pooping on it. And then you go out and shoot the dog? Maybe not. Maybe that's too extreme. A little bit. <laughs> what kind of neighbors do you have? Uh, well, I'm I'm on my sixth dog already <laughs> since I moved here. Sean, what did you do? Thing was eyeballing my wife. <laughs> it's blind. It's thir- thirteen years old. I can't. I don't stand for that kind of malarkey in my yard. <laughs> Told you, Margaret. You let it poop here one more time. I'm blowing it away. Sean, you're in your twenties. Why do you say malarkey? You just wait. I got a flamethrower on order. I don't handle for that tomfoolery. <laughs> you just wait till our next uh, homeowners association meeting. I got some complaints. <laughs> yeah, so do I. Like, you shot my fucking dog. <laughs> so I'll Turn- see you at the pool on Tuesday. Bye. <laughs> Bye. I don't, I don't think this conversation was over, but he just said, see you at the pool and left. We don't even own a pool. And while, while, while my his dead dog's right here. It turned out that the pig was owned by an Irishman, Charles Griffin, who was employed by the Hudson's Bay Company to run the sheep ranch. So you got you got the U.S. involved. This is a very international incident. Oh, this is. Yes. Intrigue aplenty. You got border dispute. You've got a guy who owns the pig that's Irish and you got a U.S. citizen. So he also owns several pigs that he allowed to roam freely. The two had lived in peace until this instant. Cutler offered $10 to Griffin to compensate for the pig, but Griffin was unsatisfied with the offer and demanded $100. Holy shit, how expensive are pigs? I don't know, but like in 1859, like, fuck, $100? That's a lot. Like, I could buy your farm. They had like one-fourth of a cent, like, coins made of, like, leaves, I think, back then. Like you, you cut a leave, you get a quarter of a penny. <laughs> it's like, hang on, let me just here. Here's a tree branch. This should cover me for the for well, that, the week. That's right? that's where the saying "money doesn't grow on trees" comes from because back then it actually did. They had they had people that would climb trees and cut off leaves, and they made they made money from that. I don't know if you knew that or not. It's it's proven fact. Okay, now I'm sitting here trying to figure out if you just made that up. <laughs> yeah, it's total bullshit. <laughs> That's what you can do with your kids, though. If you're like, listen, you know, if you want to make some money, just trim all those branches and, you know, you can get a quarter of a penny per leaf. <laughs> and they take it to the bank and the bank just says, what the fuck are you doing, kids? Get out of here. Yeah. Stop bringing trees into the <laughs> damn bank. That's not how this works. That's not how finance works. But my dad says, I don't care what your dad says. Your He's dad's an idiot. An idiot. <laughs> my dad's an amazing man. <laughs> don't you disparage the name of my family? <laughs> Kid walks out, kicks over the trash can. So, so he shoots the. So he knew that this guy had wild pigs. Are pigs running around? Right. Apparently, yeah. Apparent. Uh, it sounds like the two had lived in peace until this instant. So I'm under the assumption that everything was all fine and good, and they they kind of knew each other. But I, my guess is, is he just kind of woke up and was kind of pissy. Like maybe the wife didn't give him any the night before. <laughs> and like he gets up and he looks out his window and for like the fourth time this week, 
there's a fucking pig eating his shit. So kind of like Boardwalk Empires. I don't know if you've seen that, but so he, the guy, the guy uh, Cutler, that's his name, right? Cutler. Yeah. He's laying in bed with his wife that night. He's like, you know, I was talking to some of the French fur trappers up north, and you know what they talk? They talk about their wives. They have they give them sex with the mouth. Yeah, yeah, with the mouth. On yeah. Their, on their. <laughs> yeah. You want to try that tonight? She just rolls over and goes to sleep. He's like, son of a bitch. God, I hate this. <laughs> Fucking Canada. Fucking Oregon. Where are so, we living? I don't know. <laughs> and then he wakes up the next morning and he sees that pig out there from from uh, Griffin. He's like, I'm I'm fucking tired of this. I'm shooting this fucking pig. This yeah, is the third just, time he, this week. He goes and he looks out the window. He's just like that. Tears it. I'm done. <laughs> and uh oh, see, I'm thinking of uh oh damn it. There was a movie. It had Michael Douglas in it, where he was where he like Fatal Attraction. He was an office guy. No, not Fatal Attraction. Ant Man. You, you. The only reason you're thinking of Fatal Attraction is because of Sharon Stone's Bush. Yeah, I heard that she would actually mean to do that. I heard that too. That like, she, didn't she? Uh, oof, you know. So I don't know. I've never wore a dress, allegedly. I have, and I can <laughs> tell you. Would you know? Like, I mean, if you had your legs crossed, like, would you know spreading that much that your genitalia is going to show? I. I don't know. I would think, I guess it depends on like if the room's cold, like you get a breeze. Yeah. Why wasn't she wearing any underwear if she didn't mean to do that? Ah, good point. Isn't that like the most paused, like supposedly the most paused uh, scene ever in movies too? I believe it. Have you ever paused there? If it's not, it should be. Yeah. You Have you ever paused there when you've rented that movie? Rented? <laughs> I own. I don't. I, I owned it until the internet. Now I just have it all over my desktop. Yeah. Hello, screensaver. <laughs> Kids are like, "What movie is that from?" This most the best cinematic movie ever. Why don't you, you don't know anything about Fatal Attraction? <laughs> Oliver Stone was a genius. Look, if you look really close, you can see some pubes. Oh my god, so hot. <laughs> all right, kids, like, leave leave the room. <laughs> kids like your your son. I don't know. I can't remember what he is, but your son's like, you know, that that's all over the internet and you know, more detail. How do you know that? <laughs> I love Google. Um, okay. So where were, where are we going? With so, this? okay. So he, so he, I, I don't know. Cause, uh, cause I was talking about this movie. Michael Douglas was in it and he get, he's an office worker. And then at one point he just like, he's, I think he's driving to work and then some little innocuous thing happens. And he just loses his shit and goes on a fucking rampage. Oh, that's going to bother me. Oh, so the, uh, like, whenever they talk about, like, going postal. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, so, okay, so Cutler wakes up. You know, he's pissed off from the night before. And he looks out the window. He sees this fucking pig. And he's just like, I tears it. I'm done. Think about it, too, though, Richard. So, like, you were saying, like, you know, Oh, man, this is okay. This is getting a little the, uh, theoretical. So Cutler, you know, the only thing he's got is his wife and his imagination. Right. OK, so he's hearing all these stories about, you know, how the, the French, you know, they, they make love with their mouths. Yeah. Guys putting their mouths downstairs on the ladies, ladies putting their mouths downstairs on the guys. You know, so he's got like all this like, I mean, bent up like rage. Not rage, but like bent up like testosterone. Like he's, you know, he's like, oh, I hear all these stories all day from those fur trappers. Come home to the wife and she gives you nothing. Like today, yeah, you know, wife turns you down. It's like, I'm going to go do a show with Sean. You're not doing a show with Sean. You're doing a, a show with Richard by yourself, right? Yeah. Talking into the mic. So when she walks in, you're like, no, I'm doing a show, babe. Yeah. Doing a Is show. that Sharon Stone? <laughs> Don't look away. <laughs> look away. But like back in that day, he had nothing. Yeah. Nothing. All I had to go on was the fur trapper's word. Yeah. <laughs> fur trapper. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, he, he, like, he's got like, you know, two weeks of nothing. He's super frustrated. And that's when he sees this pig. Yeah. Ooh. And yeah. And the, the, the sexual frustration coupled with the fact that this pig is eating his fucking livelihood. And he's just, he's had it. So he goes out and he shoots it. Afterwards, he kind of calms down. He feels bad. He's like, look, I got some money. We we sold. We had a really good year. I'll give you $10. And then the guy's like, I want $100. And this, what the fuck? Following. Okay, so that's where we're at. <laughs> he, asked, he asked the, the Irishman, Griffin. He's like, so 
how much is how much do pigs cost? He's like six fifty. He's like, all right, so I feel bad. You know, I'll give you ten bucks for it. And dude's like a hundred. He's like, what the fuck? Wait, what? Okay, so following this reply, Cutler believed he should not have to pay for the pig because the pig had been trespassing on his land. A possibly, and this is in parentheses, a possibly apocryphal story claims that Cutler said to Griffin, it was eating my potatoes. Griffin replied, it's up to you to keep your potatoes out of my pig. Hmm. And so he reaches over, cuts the pig open, takes the potatoes out and says, your move, Griffin. Yeah. So, okay, so the guy's like, $10, $10, I'll give you $10. And then the Irishman's like, I want $100. And then the and then Cutler's like, well, fuck you. You're not getting anything. How about $0? Irish son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, you don't see those fights too much anymore. Well, maybe you do. I guess you would see them on the internet. Yeah. Between hobos. <laughs> well, I was thinking like road rage. You know, like people oh. bump into people and they freak out. Yeah. You should keep your, tail bump, your tailpipe off of my bumper. You should keep your bumper off my tailpipe. Well, he's got me there. He's got me there. When British authorities threatened to arrest Cutler, American settlers called for military protection. Oh, and here it goes. See, that's how it starts. So the pig's so the pig is now the first casualty in the pig war, with possibly many more to follow. Not pigs. I'm talking about people now. <laughs> just imagine they're on two sides of this like imaginary border each with a gun to the head of american pig british got a gun to the american pig americans got a gun to the british pig <laughs> i'll do it i'll do it we pick it for a month <laughs> i imagine is that what they did they put a spit roast on the pig and are roasting it while the standoff is happening or not even that they're both like building fires with the pigs like in captivity and so they're trying to build like the best spit roast to try and, like, one-up the other side. And that's how the barbecue wars started. <laughs> and we got great barbecue out of that. Oh, maybe that is. Maybe that's the first, like, barbecue competition. Well, is that? An, yeah, so at this point. I mean, so, okay. this did happen in Canada, though. So they're, yeah. So they're staying on both sides of this this imaginary border. You know, they're building up these these fire roasts, these pit, spit roasts to get this, you know. They're going to barbecue a British pig in America. Barbecue American pig in the uh, Canadian area. And, you know, I don't know if you know this, but if you smoke pig, it smells really good. Yeah. Oh, God, yes. And so then somebody gets the idea. It's like, you know, if we mix all these things together, we get a pretty good glaze. And they start mixing it on there. And that's how the competition starts. Yeah. And then, oh, and see, and then we're like a dry rub kind of people. So we're like rubbing, we're like rubbing stuff on our pig. And then the British guys are all about you know, sauces, so then they start slathering the pig in, like, barbecue sauce and stuff like that, but we're all dry rub, and so it's, like, a whole, like, north versus south thing, because it's, like, it's Kansas City meets meets Texas. Nothing good comes from a barbecue competition. I'm surprised people don't die there, now that I'm thinking about it. Well, I mean, it's, you, you, you feel very, like, oh, my gosh, like, they killed my pig, but then you eat the pig they killed, and you're like, oh, my God, they cook so amazing. Yeah. All right, let's give them a ribbon. Let's just give out ribbons and call it good. <laughs> let's not shoot people. Let's give out ribbons. So the moral is, you know, if you if you settle everything by a barbecue cook-off, everybody wins. I think that's a good lesson. Yeah, because you charge, you charge 10 bucks a head, you know, and 10 bucks a beer. And you get free food, and everybody laughs, and there's blues music playing. I mean, it's oh, amazing. Oh, I love blues music. I think we got to the moral too early. Yeah, we did. I'll, I'll edit it and put that to the end. Fantastic. <laughs> hey, everyone. This is Tom from the Say What Podcast, and I would love it if you'd swing over to SayWhatPodcast.com to check us out as soon as you're done listening to this show. We handpick real news articles to poke fun at every week, like a lady from Florida attacking her boyfriend with a ceramic squirrel, or kids rubbing chapstick in their eyes to get high, or the guy who got arrested for repeatedly having sex with an inflatable pool shark. Yeah, I think you get the point. So tune into the Say What Podcast every Friday on iTunes, Stitcher, and at SayWhatPodcast.com. We're on to military escalation. So this so we're at 
Brigadier General William S. Harney, commanding the Department of Oregon, initially dispatched 66 American soldiers of the 9th Infantry under the command of Captain George Pickett to San Juan Island with orders to prevent the British from landing. Concerned that a squatter population of Americans would begin to occupy San Juan Island if the Americans were not kept in check, the British sent three warships under the command of Captain Jeffrey Hornby to counter the Americans. You think that's just like, because in that time, getting orders from, you know, Great Britain probably took months. Is this just, I don't know, is this just a pissing contest? Or do you think somebody's like, oh, no, I know the Queen wants us to do this. So let's. I'm sure, like, I'm sure part of it's probably a pissing contest. Maybe some of it's a game of telephone. You know what I mean? Like, it starts out like, oh, 66 American soldiers. And so that, like, okay, so Private Johnson on the on the British side sees 66 American soldiers show up. And so he's like, go tell the sergeant that 66 guys just showed up on the island. And so the sergeant's like, okay. And so the sergeant goes to the captain, and he's like, hey, Private Johnson just saw 666 Americans on the island. We should probably tell the general. And the captain's like, oh, my God, that's a fantastic idea. So the captain goes to the general and is like, the Americans have amassed 6,666 troops on San Juan. So by the time it gets to back to England, they're like, America has mobilized 6 million people <laughs> on this island in Oregon. And I don't know what we should do. It's like, how many people do they have in America? I think like a million and a half. So I don't know where these other people came from. Probably the damn French. <laughs> Will you get that general? He's like, well, he's busy right now. He's French kissing. Oh, that pervert. Oh, I heard they do things with their mouth. Yeah, in the dirty areas. Whoa, like in the no-no place. Yeah. Ooh. How does that even work? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm willing to try, though. <laughs> I'll go with anything once. <laughs> All right, I need to part through this bush here, and uh, I think that's it. <laughs> in the Navy. <laughs> they are the seven seas in the Navy. Um. Okay, so also I think part of this is has to be like kind of overcompensation. You know, because, I mean, you're talking about the British, okay? they They lost the revolution. Like, we served up a big can of whoop-ass on them at Yorktown. We served a big can of whoop ass on them in the War of eighteen twelve. So they're seeing guy, they're seeing Americans show up, and they're like, "Okay, you know what? We're nipping this in the bud, guys." Okay, how many? How many guys? So I let's say let's say hypothetically it wasn't a game of telephone, and they and you know the generals back in London know that it's just sixty six guys. They're like, "So so what should we send? Just like you know maybe like a." couple squads of British soldiers, and then guys like, no, no. Remember what happened to Yorktown? Remember what happened in 1812? I mean, we burned down the White House, and we had an awesome party. Remember that, Tom? Huh? Remember? Oh, the truffles were to die for. <laughs> anyway, so, burn the house down, but you know what? They still got us in the end. Not this time. Not this time, boys. Three warships. That's what we're sending. You know what I mean? That's what I mean. That's how I see it. I think I think the British are just kind of like, no, we're not we're not doing this again. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. We're not going with the third. <laughs> Fool me three times, it becomes a sitcom. <laughs> it's just amazing to think like I mean that was only what 150 maybe but oh yeah like 160 years ago. Do you think that people then were just so bored? And just out in the middle of nowhere, and it was just so kind of wild, wild west that this stuff happened. Um, so you're thinking they're just bored, so they're like, "Hey, let's send warships." And no, because I think I think this was I. I mean, this had the the opportunity to turn into a thing. Like, well, I, I mean, I could see being pissed off because I mean, this was what forty five years after the War of eighteen twelve. Uh, it was like out in the middle of nowhere because Oregon and that really wasn't settled that much at this time. I mean, a little bit, but not like it was It was a territory. It wasn't a state. Right. So, I mean, they're out here in the middle of nowhere. This is a little beef between two people. 
And it's like, all right, well, I mean, just make sure they don't land here and you send 66 people. It's like, sir, they got three ships out here. It's like, <laughs> well, I mean, I guess if they land, line up and shoot at them. I don't know. I don't know. Three fucking warships. They got cannons. What do we have? Well, we've got some roasted pig. It's delicious. What but, are we going to do with it? Oh, oh, my God. This is amazing. What is, did you use a dry rub? Like, what's the spices in this oh thing? My, this is fantastic. Am I tasting sugar? I'm tasting sugar. It's honey, sir. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's genius. This is almost as good as that French thing I did the other night. I said, I said almost, almost. He's like, I didn't see any, any of the, the French ladies here or any other women around here. He's like, well, there's not. There's only dudes. Oh. Uh, oh. You can do that? <laughs> All right. New rule. What happens on San Juan Island stays on San Juan Island, boys. <laughs> okay, so uh so okay, so these strips the ships show up. Pickett and Pickett if we're going back, Pickett is the captain that's that send that's with the soldiers. Pickett was famously quoted as saying defiantly, We'll make a bunker hill of it, placing him in the national limelight. The situation continued to escalate. By August 10th, 1859, so in the span of, what, two months? Because this, yeah, by August of, yeah. So from June to August, we have gone from 66 American soldiers. We are now at, this is by August 10th, 1859, 461 Americans with 14 cannons under Colonel Silas Casey were opposed by five British warships mounting 70 guns and carrying 2,100 men. During this time, no shots were fired. So they're just massing troops. So we've got 400 guys. So it's like I said, I think this is an overcompensating thing. Yeah, it's just a big penis showing contest. And and like I said, I think I think Brit, you know Britain's kind of feeling the sting. You know they got they got their ass kicked twice in less than a hundred years, and they're like, we're uh, I'm not we're not fucking around here. All right, we want the pig we want the pig killer, and we're taking that pig killer. Five warships, twenty one hundred guys, seventy guns. Plus, how do you feel being on the American side? I mean, yeah, you know you're with you know roughly 400 other guys and you got some cannons, but you're staring at five warships and in your head. Okay. So you're, you're private Sean, private Sean standing on the beach with his gun at the ready, looking at five warships and in your head, doesn't the thought cross your mind? Like, you know, this is over a pig at some point you're standing well i mean that's the funny thing is probably you get told hey you need to you need to go out here you're stationed here the british are attacking the british are going to attack and you're like holy shit all right you know cuz you i would imagine patriotism would have to be huge cuz i mean you know within your lifetime or at least in your you know family's lifetime you've heard the stories you're like oh this is going to be my american revolution this is what i'm going to tell my kids about oh yeah yeah that's a good point like oh i'm going to be a war hero you get up there, you're in your bunker, you got your rifle pointed out towards the boat, and you hear the guy next to you is like, you know, this is all over a fucking pig, right? It's like, well, we'll leave that part out. It's like, what do you, what do you mean? Like, did they, did they make fun of, did they make fun of the first lady? Is that what this is about? They called our women pigs, didn't they? They said we fuck pigs. I mean, I did it once when I was a teenager, but I didn't have anything else. I mean, yeah, nobody else was around. I didn't think anybody knew. <laughs> oh God, Brian, I've never told anybody this before. <laughs> It feels so good to get this out. Like, when it happened, I thought I had to spit and everything, and I didn't. It was weird, but it's like, stop. George, stop. I mean, they say pigs are, you know, <laughs> one of the few animals that have sex for pleasure. And you know what? Like, about halfway through, I kind of got the feeling she was into it. Oh, it feels so good to get this off my chest. <laughs> hey, what happens on San Juan Island stays on San Juan Island, remember? Huh? Huh? Where are you going? <laughs> wait, wait. What are you writing down? <laughs> Memoir my ass. Give that here. <laughs> she cuddled afterwards. She did. I called her my little oinky. She she didn't say that she would always love me, but deep down I knew. <laughs> I knew. War as hell, right, boys? We kept that pig for five years. <laughs> Dad always wanted to eat it, and I said, no, no, it, it 
pulls its weight. Huh? <laughs> pulls its weight. Huh? Come on. After Come on. that fifth year, dad realized why I didn't want to kill it, and he didn't either after that. <laughs> Never saw her again. She went to dad's shed, and there she stayed. <laughs> Got a new mom that year. <laughs> She looked familiar. Well, you know, come to think of it, you can't put lipstick on a pig. <laughs> I'm going to call you Susie. <laughs> but I, that's what I mean. It's like, this is over a pig. So I don't know if it's just like built up hostility or maybe, or I, it just blows my mind to think of like today, whenever there's these kind of events, it's because somebody's crossed over into somebody else's borders. Right. I mean, when you see when you hear about, you know, military incursions or military engagements today, you you know, it's it's usually over something fairly serious. You know, a political leader dies. There's an election that's supposed to happen and you find out the election's rigged or, uh, you know, there's instability in the region and some country shows up and they're saying that they're going to bring stability to a war torn nation. And I think I think one of the reasons is that you don't hear about the stupid conflicts anymore is because I think that we have enough sense now in modern society that there would have to be somebody that stands in between these 461 guys and these five warships carrying 2,100 guys and say, guys, it's a pig. Like, I'll pay. I'll pay for the pig. How much you want? I got ten dollars. Hundred, fuck that. Start shooting, boys. <laughs> Fire at will. I'm going back. To, I'm going back to the fort. We got this pig on roast, so ain't no pig worth no hundred dollars. Uh, there, there had to have been those conversations though, because you know, like on one side, it's like, what well, fucking pig was eating, eating our, eating our potatoes? And on those British ships, it's like, oh, they, they, they fucking killed one of our pigs. They killed one of our national treasures in cold pig blood. <laughs> you know what's next? They're gonna come over and fuck our wives. Yeah, yeah. First is the pigs. Next is the women. Some private's like, I don't, I don't think that's how that's wor- that's, that, how that works. That's that's kind of a leap there, Jim. Don't listen. <laughs> listen here, Shane. This is how it goes. First is the pigs, and then it's the women. <laughs> don't fall for that American propaganda. Yeah, you know why? Because they confuse the two. Because they're stupid, <laughs> stupid Americans. Can't tell between pigs and wives. You know, you know, we, we we're friends with the French. You know, well, actually, I don't think they were friends with the French at this point. <laughs> there was that whole Napoleon thing, but we uh, we always called them frogs. You know why? Because we f- killed their frogs. You know what we did after that? We fucked their wives. <laughs> oh, I love to travel. <laughs> uh, okay, so the governor of the colony of Vancouver Island, James Douglas, ordered the British Rear Admiral. Robert L. Baines to land Marines on San Juan Island and engage and engage the American soldiers under the command of Brigadier General Harney or Haney Harney. It's Harney. Harney's forces has occupied the island since July 27th, 1859. Okay. So the governor. Yeah. Okay. Governor of Vancouver. He orders British Marines. So the British have Marines. There's 21 guys. They got Marines sitting in the special ops. Yeah. Britain's not fucking around. I mean, yeah, this is over a pig, but I, I'm, I'm, I, there's something a little more to this. That's you what know? I'm saying. It's if you're out in the middle of nowhere, your hostilities up, you know, you're, you're on edge. You're just waiting for that thing to push you over. Yeah. This ain't no, you know, that's probably what it is. Everybody's all just bitter and angry. Cause I mean, living on the frontier in the 1800s, I mean, that was no picnic. I mean, we saw we saw the Revenant. Well, I mean, at least I mean, the Revenant, they were doing work and trapping. But I, I mean, imagine surviving day to day in that time frame was was pretty stressful. But I mean, what entertainment did you have? What newsworthy things did you have? Apparently shooting pigs. Yeah. Oh, a pig got shot today. That made the, the news for six straight months. Nobody nobody died from a bear attack this week. So, you know, things are looking up. Bear attacks are down. They don't, they don't do weather forecasts. They do bear attacks. I heard that. I heard that they do that in Canada, that they don't, that sometimes they put out, like, bear warnings. Like, how fucked up is that? Like, they they tell the kids at school, like, hey, you know, on the way home from school, make sure you run a little faster, because... Or find you a kid that doesn't run as fast and just kick him in the knee. (laughs) 
And that's why I was always friends with the fat kid. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and there's the fat kid like, I had a lot of friends in school. Canadian fat kids were always the most popular. I get Snicker bars and... Like Hansel and Gretel with a bear. <laughs> okay, let's... Okay, Baines refused the order. He refused the order. This is This is a guy telling his superior officer, like, no, fuck you. Well, no, it's just a governor. He's like, you have no no jurisdiction over me. What the fuck are you talking about, governor of Vancouver? My orders come from the queen. <laughs> Baines refused, deciding that, quote, and this is in quotes, two great nations in a war over a squabble about a pig was foolish. <laughs> Basically, oh, finally, he's, like, he's the voice of fucking reason here. <laughs> He's like, I'm all for cock showing, but I am not going to war over a pig. Guys, it's a pig. Well, yeah, but it was our pig. Didn't you, didn't you hear Private, Private Shane's? He was saying, next to the wives. What about your wife? What about your wife, Bill? <laughs> He's like, I'm married to a man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Local commanding officers on both sides have been given essentially the same orders. Defend yourselves, but absolutely do not fire the first shot. So this is like this is a this is a Mexican standoff. Well, I mean, I could see it's a it. Mexican I mean, standoff in Canada between British and U.S. forces. Well, because at this point, I mean, the the Revolutionary War was considered to be started by the British, right? The Boston Massacre, or was that the Civil War? Well, I thought I thought the the Revolutionary War was us. Because we we showed up, we showed up in Boston, dressed like dressed like Indians. Yeah, I thought there was some mess, and we threw we threw tea into the into we threw tea off the off the boat. Yeah, but I thought there was some massacre that the British fired on uh, Americans that kind of like pushed everybody over the edge. Oh yeah, it was the uh, was it the Boston? The, did they call it the Boston massacre? Yeah, I can't remember if that was that one or the Civil War, but there was some kind of massacre like that. And then like War of eighteen twelve was totally. Great Britain too, right? Uh, I think so. so I like think this... the I think the British started the War of eighteen twelve because they, I think they were basically trying to like invade. Like we had the Revolutionary War, and I think Britain was like, okay, we didn't really. I think I think Britain was probably like we didn't really take it that seriously. Like let's let's give this a real fucking go now. I think that was their thing. Like the Revolutionary War happened, and then Britain's like, okay, okay, like we weren't really looking. We were. I mean. I mean, you guys are you're a bunch of farmers with pitchforks and and a few guns. So, I mean, we really weren't we didn't really take you seriously. So the War of 1812, they were like, fuck you. This is this is us. And then that didn't work. And so I guess this this third the third time, like, listen, we've had two bad experiences. We don't want to lose this one and have it come back being like, hey, this was about a pig. Yeah. (laughs) And look really bad. Right. There's only there's there's one thing more terrible than being involved in a war over a pig, and that's losing a war <laughs> over a pig. I mean, we win, we can rewrite this, but if we lose, it's going to be all over the history books. <laughs> okay, for several days, the British and U.S. soldiers exchanged insults, each side attempting to go the other into firing the first shot. But discipline held on both sides, and thus no shots were fired. <laughs> so hey, it's basically like a bunch hey. of guys on a boat and a bunch of guys on a beach. I, I hear your women don't shave their armpits. <laughs> <laughs> That's so gross. <laughs> I hear you guys have sex with pigs. That's that's not that's not that's not true. That's not true. Not true. No. no. Hey. That's <laughs> Factually inaccurate, because you know we it's make like, love the pigs. <laughs> we shut up, Craig. Where's we tell them they're beautiful? <laughs> okay, so now we're we're coming, we're winding down, we're going to the to the resolution. Uh, when news about the crisis reached Washington and London, officials from both nations were <laughs> shocked and smacked themselves in the head. And said, "Jesus Christ! Oh my God! <laughs> oh." This is why we move those people to the edge of the earth. <laughs> and this is what happens. So, yeah, so so the so a messenger shows up at the White House for the president. Uh the president at the time, Buchanan, James Buchanan. Did Bu- wasn't Buchanan shot? 
Didn't Buchanan die in office? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> he I got don't shot know. over a pig. <laughs> <laughs> the assassination. Uh, okay. Officials from both nations were shocked. So, yeah, so this is what happened. So the messenger shows up. He's like, sir, there's a, there's a, you know, it looks like we're, you know, hostilities have increased on the Oregon border with Britain. What happened? What happened, private? Well, sir, first farmer Cutler shot, shot the Irishman's pig. And then, wait a minute, did they shot a pig? Yeah. I mean, it was a good pig. It was a big fat pig. I had some. It was amazing. <laughs> we put a dry rub on it. Fantastic. Anyway, the, the the thing is, you got to cook it at a low temperature. You think yeah. you know, cook it hot, get it done quicker? No, yeah, low no. temperature, slow long and time. low, slow and low. That's that's the way you get a pig done. Private, you're digressing. Right? Sorry. So they shot the pig, and now um, we're on the ver- on the brink of war. Wait a minute, brink of war? How many people are there? Well, there's five of there's four hundred of us, and we 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 have some cannons. We have some guns in place. We're ready to defend with our lives. Against what? Well, so far the British have brought five warships into play. Holy shit, five warships? Well, what are they doing now? Well, right now they're just yelling at each other. But, I mean, mark my words. Something's going to happen. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Okay. (laughs) I know. Why haven't we attacked yet? No, no, stop. Stop. What are you doing? Stop. What? No, it's over a pig. It was a good pig. I understand it was a good <laughs> pig, but in September, U.S. President James Buchanan sent General Winfield Scott to negotiate with Governor Douglas and resolve the growing crisis. This was in the best interest of the United States as sectional tensions within the country were increasing, soon to culminate in the Civil War. Scott had claimed two other border crises. Oh, Scott had calmed two other border crises between two nations in the late 1830s. He arrived in the San Juans in October and began negotiations with Douglas. So, so now we're, we're, we're coming to a, a nice peace treaty started over a pig. Uh, as a result of the negotiations, both sides agreed to retain joint military occupation of the island until a final settlement could be reached, reducing their presence to a token force of no more than 100 men. The, quote, British camp was established on the north end of San Juan Island along the shoreline for ease of supply line and access, and the American camp was created on the south end on a high windswept meadow suitable for military barrages against shipping. Today, the Union Jack still flies above the British camp, being raised and lowered daily by park rangers, making it one of the very few places without diplomatic status where U.S. government employees regularly hoist the flag of another country. During the years of joint military occupation, the small British and American unions, units on San Juan Island had a very amicable, mutual social life, visiting one another's camps to celebrate their respective national holidays and holding various athletic competitions. Park rangers tell visitors the biggest threat to peace on the island during these years was the large amounts of alcohol available. Well, like I said, they get bored and get drunk, and then they want to fight. Yeah. I want to see, like, you know, like, okay, so the British are on one end of the island and the Americans are on the other end, and then they meet in the middle and have a barbecue. And they roast that damn pig that got shot. <laughs> Every year they have an, a, a, a Every year, pig. Oh, wouldn't that be wouldn't that be awesome? Every year they like cook a pig, and they're like, "Oh my god, we almost shot each other over this fucking pig." <laughs> Weirdest, craziest thing, isn't it? We were really bored back in the 1860s, weren't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were. Yeah. The state of affairs continued for the next 12 years. The dispute was peacefully resolved after more than a decade of confrontation and military bluster, during which time the local British authorities consistently lobbied London to seize back the Puget Sound region entirely, as the Americans were busy elsewhere with the Civil War. In 1866, the colony of Vancouver Island was merged with the colony of British Columbia to form an enlarged colony of British Columbia. Uh, in 1871, 
the enlarged colony joined the newly formed Dominion of Canada. That year, the United States signed the Treaty of Washington, which dealt with various differences, including border issues. Among the results of the treaty was the decision to resolve the San Juan dispute by international arbitration with the Kaiser of Germany chosen to act as arbitrator. Ooh, they burned a Kaiser. Um, Wilhelm referred to referred the issue to a three-man arbitration commission, which met in Geneva for nearly a year. On October 21st, 1872, the commission decided in favor of the United States. The arbitrator chose the American preferred marine boundary via the Harrow Strait to the west of the islands over the British preference, which lay to the east. On November 25th, the British withdrew their Royal Marines from the British camp, and the Americans followed by July of 1874. And as they were leaving, each of them said, we will never speak of this again. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the war was finally resolved, and we won again! <laughs> Woo! USA! USA. Well, they're like it was by a it was by a judge decision, so technically it wasn't a win. Yeah, but it was the Germans. Yeah, and I mean, come on, it's not like they were our friends. <laughs> it's funny that these things don't like ever make it to the history books. You know, I think we can all agree why because they're just that goddamn embarrassing. Yeah, both sides just would ignore this whole thing ever happened. It's a dark page in history. Uh, so, uh, kind of to segue into a little bit of history, Richard, before we close out this episode, um, you know, I don't know if you realize this, but we've been doing something pretty amazing for the last two years, every Sunday for two straight years, 104 straight times, 104 straight times, two straight years. And that's been the two of us getting together and speaking into microphones with the fervent hope that God, someone else hopefully finds this funny. And I think they do. I, I, what I find interesting is, you know, when we reached 52 episodes, uh, I was pretty much like, holy cow, this is amazing. I didn't think we would do this 52 straight times. And I remember that day when we recorded, I'm like, I, I really hope we can make it to 104. You know, that'd be kind of cool. And here we are, we've done it and we're still going pretty strong. I think. Dude, I think it's I, I I'm I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, put the pig before the before the horse, <laughs> but I've I'm I'm actually been quite impressed. I actually tell people about this show now. I do the same. I'm pretty confident with I mean, especially looking in the last probably six, seven months, I think we've really found our groove, figured out how this show should work. Kind of this idea we take these stories and we kind of improv them a little bit with our own twist on, you know, Gregory and Brian talking about how they had sex with a pig. <laughs> yeah, I'm no longer embarrassed to mention this show to other people. And I think that's I think, you know, that's a win. That's a win for you and a win for me. Yeah, you get all the free funny you want. And uh, I think what's funny is so, you know, before we started this episode, we talked for probably a good hour, hour and a half before we even hit play. That's uh, true. So it's still it's still cool that we can do this and it doesn't feel like we're trying to force it out. And if you want to know what that hour before was about, just so everybody knows, Sean is this about very, pig sex. It was about there was a little bit of pig sex, but <laughs> Sean is very mad about Game of Thrones and he's a little he's a little ticked at George R. R. Martin and he wants him to finish the damn book. Well, like what I told you, what really sum summarizes uh, the the funniness or the frustrationness of this is like you know, there's a cartoon that showed you know pre this season of Game of Thrones, it showed the TV people and the book people. And the TV people are like, hey, don't you fucking ruin this for me? And the book people are like, all right, I won't tell you anything. And of course, this season comes out, there's no book, and all the TV people are like, oh my god, did you see what happened? And there's the book people, like son of a bitch. Yeah. I'm going to Lady Stoneheart you to death. Ah, we don't even know who that is, so fuck you, buddy. <laughs> you still have that one. Very, <laughs> very good. So, I mean, it's it's kind of two milestones back-to-back -back with our 100th, 100th episode in this one. But, you know, again, just want to say congratulations to you, Richard, sir, for... And to you. I don't... Guys, I don't know if you if you know this. And I I, I don't know if you do, but you should. Like, this guy right here in my opinion, is the hardest working guy in podcasting. 
Like I come in, like I show up, I sit down in the chair, I yak into I yak into the microphone and and try and make funny. But this guy is 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 the is the I I consider him the brains. I consider him the uh, he's the machinery. I consider him the machinery behind this entire outfit. This is the guy. If you want to know what makes things go, this is the guy that makes things go. And I've I've yet to find anyone that works as hard to try and make something of quality. I'm hard pressed to find that another guy like that. And this is the guy right here. I'm pointing at my wall because he's not here in <laughs> front of me, but I'm still pointing. Uh, yeah. I mean, I just do what I can. I know, like, like I said, if you go back to episode zero, zero, when we started this thing, it was kind of, you know, Hey, we're not, we didn't have like a bad falling out or anything. We just kind of started drifting apart. Like, you know, friends do. And it's like, you know, I really want to make sure we do this every week. And, um, that's kind of why I push it. Cause you know, at some point it's, it's pretty easy for friends to like, Oh, well, we didn't talk this week. Well, we didn't talk that week. And before you know it, it's been two or three years. Yeah. And with this, we forced ourselves to sit down and you know, it's, it's really selfish on my end because I'm a lonely person. So forcing you to do these shows <laughs> allows me to get some of that out. It's, it's, it's never, it's never forced bear. <laughs> it's never forced Snooky bear. <laughs> Rich, you want to do a show? I'm kind of tired. Okay, well, I guess I'll just go hang out by myself. I'm going to go call my my mom and ask her if I should be a country music star. <laughs> oh, God, Sean, don't do that. I'll I'll do a show. I'll do a show. Laura, is that the boy again? <laughs> is he singing Hanky Breaky Heart again? <laughs> oh, my God. Why would you buy him that CD? <laughs> But yeah, again, you know, thanks, you know, thanks to everybody that listens and everything. And, uh, you know, thanks again for you, Richard, for taking this fun journey for us. You know, it's, you know, 104 episodes strong. I, I, I have no Woot. reason to think why we won't hit, you know, 156. Good math. Yeah. I think last time we struggled with it. <laughs> no, and I'm saying, and also he's been drinking. So I think, you know, brava. <laughs> That's quick math. Well, I had the I had it actually typed up and ready to go. It's above <laughs> my housekeeping. <laughs> so, I guess to wrap up this pig uh, uh, ceremonial episode, do you have any Richard's closing thoughts? Time heals all wounds, and and time will make time will be master of us all one day. But until then, I'd like to quote Ferris Bueller by saying that life moves pretty fast. And if you don't stop to look around once in a while, you could miss it. And I'm going to connect that by saying that life does move fast. And for an hour a week, I at least an hour a week, I get to sit down and chit chat with my best friend and make funny. And the, honestly, the fact that there's a microphone in front of me doesn't. I would have this conversation with Sean, whether there was a microphone in front of me or not. But I think the fact that we do this is the reason that we talk at all. And I'm not saying that like, oh, if we didn't have a show, we wouldn't talk. But this is what is able to this is what kind of kept us. It, it didn't. It, this is this is what didn't make us friends that drifted apart. And then we see each other, you know, 10 years later in a grocery store. And exchange numbers and don't call because it's weird and awkward at that point. So, yeah, that's I don't know. That's all. That's all I got at the, at the risk of getting too weepy. <laughs> I think the next thing you'd ask me is like, Sean, will you kiss me like one of the French girls? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. I did it once before. Love me like that Irishman. Love that pig. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you talked about, I, mean, I don't want to drag on too long with it, but, you know, you're talking about, like, all these times. I went back and listened to our episode eight, because the new Turtles movie's coming out soon. And just that conversation that we had that, you know, we probably would have had before, but it would have been gone and in the ether and never been able to relive. Yeah. Uh, so it's really cool to go back and listen to those things. I agree. And like Tiffany said, she's like, wow, that's been two years ago. I'm like, yeah, that was two years ago. But I will go ahead then on this uh, two-year anniversary episode. I will do a little bit of housekeeping. Yes, let's 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 sweep it up. Let's land the bird. Let's 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 get these let's get these bright and happy people home. 
to go to our website. We're at languageofbromance.com. Follow us on Twitter. We're at languageofbro. Email us at eatthebeaver at languageofbromance.com. Like us on Facebook and subscribe and leave a review on Google Play Music, iTunes, and Stitcher. And don't forget to check us out on the Pod Bros Network. The best podcast site on the internet where you will not see any of our podcasts fight over a dead pig. And we'll probably- none of the Yeah, and and we will never touch anyone else's pig or wife. <laughs> that's that's the contract you have to sign, actually. Yeah. I signed it reluctantly. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and uh, if you want to join the ranks of the LOB Army, the two year strong LOB Army, go to our Patreon account. It's www.patreon.com slash language bromance. And you can pick which rank you want to be in for just a small, small fee. Basically, like the price of a coffee, like 25 cents a week, 25 cents an episode. You yeah. can join the LOB Army. That's the price of a rib, one rib, like a pig rib. I don't know. I'm trying to connect it. You know? <laughs> Don't leave me hanging. It's like the bite of a slice of of, uh, of bacon. You, one yes. piece of bacon. One piece of bacon for the low, low price of one piece of bacon. Everybody loves bacon. That's, a, oh, see, that's perfect. That's marketing. <laughs> uh, I was also, I, I was just going to wrap this up by saying you could be a general in this army and you can start your own war over a pig. I don't know if we'll join you in that war. I mean, we might send people to negotiate, but... Oh, I would have to say it probably won't be over a pig, but it may be over a McRib. <laughs> oh my god, I love the McRib. Uh, it only comes out like four times a year. Yeah. That way you know it's special. <laughs> uh, all right, well, is there anything else before I close her out? No, no. Let's, let's close the book on year number two. Let's uh, yeah. Let's start chapter three. <gasps> chapter three, book three, and it only took us two years. <laughs> hey, we're beating George R. R. Martin. <laughs> Woo! All right, well that's all the bromance we have for this show. I'm Sean, and I'm Richard, and I say we eat the beaver. Fuck beaver! Look at this pig. Mm. Did you kill my pig? Did you uh, kill my pig? Yeah. Where's your wife? <laughs> Thump. Civil War. <laughs>